Today we're going to look at the Aquarium Lab and I'm going to help you figure out how to install the files for the lab, how to access the student guide, and also I'm going to give you some hints on how to build some of the animals, which are a little tricky. So you can find the Aquarium Lab by going over to uh, westhillcs.com and clicking on the CSA section, uh, the, the workbook, and here in Unit 5 in the workbook, it, under Writing Classes, is the Aquarium Lab. Now, I realize that you have a hard copy of the student guide that I handed out today, but you may find it useful to have an electronic copy also while you're working. And if you want that, you just click on this link right here, and it will take you to the electronic version of what you have right there in front of you. And the other thing we need to do is we need to install the starter files for the Aquarium Lab. And to do that, they can be found by clicking on this link in this. That will take you to a folder where a whole bunch of Greenfoot Labs are sitting. And the one that we want is called uh, Aquarium Student. See, this is the Aquarium Student file. So I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to hit the download button. And then that will download the file onto your computer. Now, once that's done, I'm going to click on this little button here and say show in folder. And you can see that there is a aquarium student folder here, but you notice that there's a zipper on it. And that means that this is a zip file. To unzip it, I'm going to double click on it. And once I do that, here is the unzippered version. It's important that you move the unzippered version out of the zippered version. Otherwise, you will not be able to execute code running inside a zippered folder. So you need to take this unzippered folder and drag it either to your desktop or to your uh, BlueJay folder or to your number drive, someplace that you are able to work from. Uh, I'm going to take the lazy approach, and I'm just going to drag it to my desktop. <laughs> and once I have it dragged to my desktop, you notice that there's no zipper on this file. That's good. And then I'm going to open up this folder. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of uh, code in here. And to start the Greenfoot project, I'm just going to double click on the project icon with the little green foot. And that's going to start up my project. And here we are. Now, you'll notice that wh whereas the entire aquarium fits on my screen, actually, even here, it really doesn't. Uh, on your laptop, it's much worse because a bunch of it's going to get cut off. And so you might want to open up this aquarium file right here in the top right and go with some smaller numbers so that the entire aquarium is visible on your screen. That would be a good thing to do because if you have large parts of the aquarium that are invisible, then what's going to happen is some of the animals will start to disappear and you're not quite sure if they died or they're just off screen. So you want to reshape. Let me do this right now, in fact. Uh, maybe I'll just lower this to maybe like uh, 900 by 700 or something like that. And um, now you can see it's much more manageable. I've got a smaller aquarium to work with. So that's item number one. Now, um, in order to figure out what has to happen here, let me show you it once again. I think I showed you this once before the scenario for what the finished product should look like. And to do that, I'm going to go back to the student guide that I had here before. And you can see that under the demonstration, there's a tab here, a tag, I should say. And I'm going to go into click that tag, and that will run the simulation right here. It's not running right now because you have to hit the Run button. And now it's running. And so we'll start with the first creature, which is the clownfish. So if I click on the clownfish, you can see I got one. I can have several, by the way. Uh, and you notice that the clownfish, when it gets to the end, it starts over at the other side. So its X coordinate gets reset to zero, but the Y coordinate remains what it was before. As a reminder, I mentioned to you last time we had class that on Greenfoot, as is the case of most graphic systems, the origin is the top left corner. So that's zero, zero up there. In this direction, to the right, x is increasing. And in, in this direction, going downward, the y coordinate is increasing, not decreasing like it is in math. 
So let's go now over, I'm going to reset this. Let's go back to our lab. Let's see if we can get that clownfish going. Now, it appears that they've already given you a clownfish file. Let's look at this one. So I'm going to right mouse click, create a new clownfish, put it on the screen, and run the lab. And you can see that that clownfish is not doing very well. Uh, I've had several aquariums in my life, and when the fish starts swimming like that, it's not a good sign. So we're going to uh, reset this, and we have to rewrite the code for the clownfish. So I'm going to open up the code by double-clicking on it, and you see that the Greenfoot editor, which is the same as the BlueJay editor, and the reason for that is that the same gentleman that wrote BlueJay also wrote Greenfoot. Uh, I'm going to change my fonts to be a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit more easily. Okay, there we go. And you can see right now that the reason the clownfish is turning in a circle is that it's moving and it's turning a little bit. So I don't think we need that. Uh, so that's already an improvement. Let's compile and run it and see what the difference is now that we've removed the turn. And you can see it's working a little bit better. You can adjust the speed of the clownfish down here uh, where it says speed. Now you notice that it gets stuck when it gets to the edge of the world. So what we have to do is when it gets to the edge of the world, we have to move the clownfish from here all the way over to the left-hand side. So I'm going to open up the clownfish code. I'm going to reset the, uh, the uh, application. I'm going to open up the clownfish code. And this is the key to working in Greenfoot is first you have to make sure that you have no compiler errors. And when you, when you don't have any compiler errors, you can switch the mode now from source code to documentation by going up here to the top right and clicking on this little tab and switching to documentation mode. And here you can see all the documentation on the clownfish. And I'm going to call your attention in particular to two sets of methods. These are the methods that the clownfish inherits from the actor class. And these are the methods that the actor class inherits from the object class. Now, you're probably not going to need to use any of these methods here. But you're going to need to use some of these methods in your lab, not only for the clownfish, but for a lot of the other objects we're going to create uh, for this lab. And right now, I'm looking for something in here that will allow me to move the clownfish coordinates from wherever it is right now over to the left-hand side. So discuss with your partner which of these methods might be an appropriate method for doing that. Okay, uh, Mr. Garofalo, sir, do you see anything here that might uh, appeal to you changing the location of the clownfish? I like it, sir. Set location. So I think we're going to need that one. And to see what that does, I'm sure there's a way to get to it from Greenfoot, but usually what I just do is open up a Google tab and type in Greenfoot set location. And then you can see here there's all kinds of information about set location. The other thing you can do is you can just try it out, and if it doesn't work, the system will complain and tell you what it's looking for. So let's go back to regular code mode. Now, here, you might get the mistaken idea that if you hit this close button, it'll take you back to code mode, but it won't. You can see it takes you back here, and then if you open up the clownfish, you're right back where you started. Yes, sir. Uh, anyway, to get back to the code, what you want to do is just go back to this top right tab here and type in source code, and that will bring you back to the code section. All right, so going back to the clownfish, uh, we've decided we need to set the location. We need to set the location when it gets to the edge. Now, some of you may remember the method that you used to determine if the clownfish is at the edge, because we used the same method in our wombat lab. But in case you don't remember, we can just have a quick look at the documentation again and see which one of these will tell you when we've reached the edge of the screen. Uh, okay, Ms. Ria, which one is it? Is at edge. So that would be uh, right here, is at edge. So going back to the code one last time, I'm going to put in here uh, if is at edge, then we want to do some stuff. Uh, and then uh, otherwise, we want to do this regular move here like that. Okay. So now the question is, what do we want to do? I, I think we want to call that other method that uh, Mr. Garofalo had suggested, which was the uh, set location method. So I'm going to just type in set location. And this will not compile right now, but if I go over here, you can see that the error message tells me 
that I need two integers, and you could probably guess what those integers are. Yeah, so they'll be the x and the y coordinates. What should we set the x coordinate to when it gets to the right hand side of the screen? Uh, Ms. Misson, what do you think? Okay, so that's going to be zero. And what do we do for the y coordinate? Yeah, we want to use the existing y coordinate there. So to do that, you just do a get y command like this. And so what's happening here is uh, when it gets to the edge, we're going to bring it to the other side. Now, this code has a bug in it, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But this is a good start. So let's run this puppy. I'm going to compile it. I'm going to create a clownfish, and I'm going to run it. And you can see that it worked fine, and then I actually got it back over here to the other side. But now it's not moving. And I want to know, looking at this code, can you tell why it's not moving? It goes back to the other edge. So now this is always true, and so it gets stuck here. So we have a couple of ways to fix this. One way we could fix it is just like this. I think this should work. So let's try that. And you can see that works. Uh, another way to fix it is that instead of using a zero here, we could just use some small number like a five or something like that. That would be another way to do it. And if I run it now, you see it's not quite at zero, so it, it will continue to run fine. So of the five animals you have to build, I've already built one for you. So now um, I'm going to show you the next one, which is the starfish. This one you're going to do yourself. Uh, if we do the starfish right now and run it, it doesn't do anything. And if we open up the code, you see that they left it completely blank for you. Uh, to get an idea what the starfish has to do, let's go to the demonstration module. I'm going to reset this. And uh, let's look at a starfish. Oh, got to run it first. There is a starfish. And you can see that when it hits the edge of one of the screens, one of the edges of the screen, it just bounces off at some random angle. So anytime it gets to the edge of the screen, it, it, it changes and turns at some random angle and just kind of bounces around. That's what it does. So I'm going to give you uh, 10 minutes to work on that right now. If you don't finish it, it's OK, but I just want to get you started on it. So if it's at the edge, just make it turn some random angle. Remember that Greenfoot has a random number generator built into it. You can use the Java one also, by the way, because this is running under Java. But just as a reminder, this is the one under Greenfoot. And then you can put some number in here, which is going to be the upper limit on whatever you want to turn. In this case, I think you want to use a 360 here for n. OK, so that's going to be the way to get the random number. And you only want to do that if it, it reaches the edge of the board. Yes, Jeremy? Uh, we, did the, uh, we did the starfish. And uh, the next animal looks like is the crab. We're not going to work on the crab here. You have to do that one on your own. Uh, I'm going to go on to the next one, uh, which is the seahorse. Now, this, I think some people find this to be the hardest of all the animals that you have to do. So let's look at what the seahorse is supposed to do. It's supposed to move in sort of this circular pattern uh, around this uh, center point that's not visible. So let's look at that. Uh, here's a seahorse. So you can see here the seahorse moves in this sort of this circular pattern like that. You see that? And so uh, we're going to show you how to do that. Now, you notice that um, when you run the uh, lab, there, there is no seahorse given to you. So there's two ways to do this. I'll show you the hard way and the easy way. The hard way is you can come up here and say, edit new class. But then you have to do a bunch of things that makes it difficult. A much easier way is if you go over to the actor and right mouse click and say, add new subclass, and just say seahorse. And then you can actually pick out the picture that you want to use for it, which happens to be this one here, and hit OK. And then it will automatically create the class for you, set the image, and it will also set the inheritance so that it inherits from actor. See that? Now, uh, there's no code here for the act class, for the act method. So you have to write the code. And I'm going to give you some hints here. So if we go over to the documentation, 
there's some methods here that you will need to make it act in this uh, sort of uh, weird circular pattern. And the ones that you need to know about are um, get rotation and set rotation. So those are two important methods to know. And also there are, if you look in the student guide, there's a bunch of hints down here as to how to make the seahorse work. So between the hints that I just gave you about using get location and get rotation and set rotation and the hints that are provided here, you should be able to get the seahorse to work the way you, you want. I'm going to move on to the next couple of creatures now. Anybody have any questions so far? Yeah, yes, sir. All right. I want to talk about two of the animals that come at the end of the lab. And they are, uh, the next two animals that are going to be coming here are the, uh, the octopus and the, and the turtle. The octopus and the turtle are different from the other creatures because the octopus and the turtle are controllable with your keyboard keys. So you press some buttons on the keyboard and the octopus and the turtle do some things. So it turns out that the original green foot that was built here, the movement, like for example, you notice here I have a move five. What does the five refer to? What are the units on the five? Who can tell me? Yes, miss? Those are pixels. You see that, right? So if I was to go like uh, 0.3 pixels, you can see here that it would not like that because it only moves in increments of integer pixels. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but when I create my clownfish and I run it, can you see that it's kind of herky-jerky? It's not smooth. You see that, right? And part of the reason it's not smooth is because it's moving in whole pixel amounts instead of fractions of a pixel. And it turns out that for these creatures that we're building, the clownfish, the seahorse, the starfish, and the crab, that's okay. But when we get to the octopus and the turtle, we're going to lose much of the effect that we want if we get this sort of jerkiness in our motion. So what we want to do is we want to install another class from Actor called Smooth Mover, which will be similar to Actor, except it will allow you to move in much smaller gradations and will let you move slowly uh, and smoothly. The price we will pay, of course, is that it will tie down the processor much more significantly, but who cares? We're going to go over here to where it says edit, and we're going to say import class. And we're going to select this smooth mover, which has already been written for us. And you can see that smooth mover inherits from actor. Now, if I open up smooth mover, you'll see that it's similar to actor, but here, Instead of using get x and get y, we would use things like get exact x and get exact y. And there are some other minor differences here. And uh, you can see that the motions here are more in the decimal uh, realm instead of integer realm. And so here you can see all of these mo uh, methods that are overwritten use decimal numbers instead of integer numbers. So when we build our, when we build our, uh, octopus and when we build our turtle we're going to have them inherit from smooth mover instead of having them inherit from actor now i want to talk a little bit about the turtle let's uh look at what the turtle can do by going back to our demonstration and i'm going to just reset this to get all these other animals off the screen and let's look at this turtle right here now this turtle i don't know if this works in the demonstration module oh it does okay uh i don't know if you can see this or not but if i'm going to hold mouse click down for a little while and I let it go you can see that the turtle doesn't stop right away it has some momentum and so it will actually like glide in the water and slow down that noise you hear by the way is the turtle periodically running into some food and eating it these little things floating down are the food uh, so we can build a small physics engine to help us uh, navigate this turtle and we're also going to use a similar physics engine for the octopus. The turtle physics engine is a little bit more sophisticated. If you look in your student guide, uh, they're going to give you all kinds of hints on how to build that, um, that physics engine. And I'm going to give you a lesson on it also next time we have class together. 
Now, I did this lab on Saturday just to kind of refresh my memory. And I was reminded of the fact that in this entire lab, the only thing that was really, really challenging was actually adding the food. And so next class, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to show you how to build a physics engine to navigate the turtle and the octopus. And I'm also going to show you how to add the food to the aquarium, give you some hints on that. But right now, everything I've taught you so far is enough to get you going for the next half hour on the other simpler animals, which is the starfish, the crab, uh, might be oh, the seahorse. So you work on those today. And then when we get together again on Thursday, I will give you the remaining hints on how to build a physics engine and also how to add the food to the aquarium.